I got sick with the flu in March of 2014. I was 33 at the time and otherwise perfectly healthy and didn't really think anything of it as I started to get sick and as I continually got sicker, it was one of those things where I thought, well, this must be the worst of it and I'm gonna turn the corner. And it just, it didn't happen. And I continued to get sicker and sicker until eventually I needed to go to the hospital. I'd never felt so sick in my life and I'm, I had a ton of back pain and I remember desperately trying to just feel better in any position I was to try to do anything to make my sore throat better. It was by far the worst I had ever felt and I'm pretty sure I blacked out a couple times. And the next morning, I barely made it down the stairs uh, to the couch. And when I realized I, I couldn't get up off that couch, I called a friend and I said, I, I think I need to go to the hospital. Um, and she came in and took a look at me and she goes, I think I need to call 911. The long-term complications of the flu have been myriad. I've had, um, I spent three months in the hospital. I was in the ICU for a month. I was on a ventilator for two months. I was on life support. That eventually led to an emergency amputation due to lack of circulation to my left leg. So in the course of getting quite so sick from the flu, I had bilateral bacterial pneumonia, which led to septic shock and all of my organs began to fail and eventually the only option left was to put me on life support. A particular kind of life support which is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation and so it's like a heart-lung bypass machine. And in that time, I was on it for five days, um, one of the lesser known but known complications of that form of life support is a lack of circulation to the limbs. And as it turns out, there was a lack of circulation to my left leg and they had to perform emergency amputation to my left leg above the knee. The consequences of having had bilateral bacterial pneumonia, which was sparked from the flu, is permanent lung damage. My lungs had filled with fluid and it took a very long time to clear those out in the hospital and as a result of that I have a lot of scar tissue and the lungs don't function like normal lungs. So I perpetually have a cough. It's a condition called bronchiectasis. Sometimes um, it can lead to a need for uh, some antibiotics to clear it out. I also had cardiac complications in part because during sepsis and septic shock, all of my organs began to fail and um, there was a lot of stress and pressure on my heart function at that time and it was quite low and to give it of, to give myself and my heart and my lungs a chance to recuperate, they put me on life support. And while that saved my life, ultimately all of the stress from um, the complications from the flu, my heart function returned, but not to completely normal for my age and physical fitness. And so I continued to live with a slightly below normal heart function. And while that's not a day-to-day -day hindrance, it's certainly something that I worry about and have to monitor um, going forward. The long-term complications have been, I came out of all of this with my life, but without my left leg, um, with some permanent cardiac damage, with some permanent lung damage, and having to reassess my entire life at the time, at 34, with a new permanent disability, with more long-term health consequences that I could have ever imagined, um, and all from something that most people don't even consider to be a serious health risk in the flu. Unfortunately, I was not vaccinated when I got sick. I had somehow missed that the flu vaccine was really for everyone and that I should have just taken a few minutes to go and get vaccinated. And so there isn't any guarantee that had I done that, I wouldn't have caught the flu, but most certainly I wouldn't have had such an extreme um, reaction and have had all of the consequences that I've had to deal with thereafter. And so I have ever since gotten vaccinated and certainly am anxious to tell everybody and anybody that they should also get vaccinated. I want people to know that the flu is not something to take lightly, that it's not just something that you, that everybody gets and it takes a couple days and then you're fine and you move on. If you're lucky, that is what it is. But for a lot more people than you would think, it can become very serious very quickly. It can be life-threatening, and it's absolutely something that you should do to minimize your risk to get vaccinated. If you don't want to do it for yourself, you should do it 
for your loved ones, for other people, so that you minimize the spread of the flu, you take into account other people perhaps have you know, conditions or um, compromised immune systems or just you know, can't afford to get sick like that and, and get vaccinated. It only takes a few minutes.